So today, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to open them with me to the prophet Ezekiel. The prophet Ezekiel. And tonight, this morning, excuse me, I have a message that I feel is appropriate that God wants to speak to us today. I'm closing out this series. He is wonderful. How many know Jesus is wonderful? How many could just give him praise that he kept you this year? How many feel like some of you, through the love of God, might have even diverted disaster, averted disaster, and God came to our aid? And as I close out this series and we get ready for Christmas, I want to share a word that's on my heart. Ezekiel chapter 34, and I want us to begin reading in verse 11. It says, indeed, I myself, this is the Lord speaking through the prophet Ezekiel. Indeed, I myself will search for my sheep and seek them out. He says, as a shepherd, and how many know that during Christmas, we hear about the shepherds that came to, to, to honor Jesus on his birthday. It says, as a shepherd seeks out his flock on the day, he is among his scattered sheep. So will I seek out my sheep and deliver them. How many have experienced that deliverance? It says, I will deliver them from all the places where they were scattered on a cloud and dark day. And he says, and I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and I will bring them to their own land. And listen to what the Lord is promising to his sheep. He says, I will feed them on the mountaintops of Israel, in the valleys and in the inhabited places of the country. He says, I will feed them in good pasture and their fold will be on the high mountains of Israel. How many know to serve Jesus is a mountaintop experience on the high mountains? And there they shall lie down in a good fold and feed in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. And in verse 16, he says, I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away. I will bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. This morning, I want to share a word that's in my heart because I believe this is what makes God so wonderful. I want to talk about God's compassion for his sheep. God's compassion for his sheep. Before you see it, look at your neighbor and tell him, he is a compassionate father. You may be seated. And one of the things that makes God so wonderful is his compassion. I couldn't think of a better message to speak during Christmas holiday, during this high holy season, than to speak about the heart of the Father. The Bible says in John 3, 16, that for God so loved the world, that he what? That he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Let me, let me ask you, how many of you have been enjoying that life? How many could really give him praise? You've been enjoying the everlasting life. And how many of we also enjoy the abundant life? We enjoy these things because of his compassion for us. See, I want to tell you this morning that above all things, uh, what's the most important is God's compassion. More than all that the church has and all that we have in our home and all the things that we're experiencing, there's nothing more important, especially in this, during this time, than the compassion that God has for the condition of his people. When you think of how the Lord views us, we, we should see that he likens you and I to sheep. That's how he views us. That's what we read in Ezekiel chapter 34. Sheep are mentioned no less than 220 times in scripture. Now you might ask, why does God call us sheep? Well, I know all of us, we, we all call ourselves something. You know, some of us call ourselves lions. Some of us call ourselves giant killers. Spiritual warriors. Well, regardless of what you call yourself, God says, you're a sheep. <laughs> you are a sheep. He looks at us as sheep. Why? Because sheep, sheep are weak. I'm sure there are people here this morning that you've had your moments of weakness. Sheep are weak. You know, sheep are basically defenseless creatures. We don't, they don't have claws. They don't have horns. Well, goats have horns, 
rams have horns, but the sheep of his pasture are really uh, defenseless creatures. Also, sheep need direction. You know, when you look at sheep, they have poor eyesight. Often when they graze, their eyes get sticky and they get dirt and food in their eyes and bugs get stuck around their face. They, they spend a lot of their life with their face down. And so the shepherd anoints their head with oil in order to keep their vision clear. And he does that because he cares for his sheep. Also, sheep are very restless. How many know what it feels like to be a little restless sometimes? You know, sheep, they're easily distracted. And they have a tendency to wander from their pasture. They have a tendency to wander away from the protection of their shepherd. The Lord sees us as sheep. And finally, sheep are easily led. What sheep lack in vision, they compensate in their hearing. They have strong hearing. And what you find about sheep is that they often respond to the loudest voice. Now, I want to bring this out this morning because there are really two voices that are trying to lead the sheep. There's two voices that want to capture the attention of the sheep. First, it's the voice of the world. The, the world wants the sheep. The world wants to take the sheep. And the second voice is the voice of God. And, and what we need to understand that God is saying to us is that he wants us to learn to tune into his voice. See, the world, it wants the sheep because the world desires to wound the sheep. The world wants to take advantage of the sheep. Satan really wants to come in and do all he can to remove God's sheep from his covering and from his care. See, the world wants to take advantage of the sheep. The world wants to misuse the sheep for its purposes. I want to even say that the, the world wants to abuse the sheep. You know, a lot of times when we think about abuse, we think about things that we see on the Internet or on the news of people who've really gone through some dark situations in their life or have been led into dark situations. But when you look at the word abuse, it simply sometimes means to misuse, to misuse. Even looking at our children's choir this morning, I'm so grateful to see that our children are being raised in the house of God. How many could rejoice? No, how many could rejoice a little more that our children are being... I tell you, there's no safer place for your children than to be raised in the house of God. I'll tell you why. Because the world wants our children. The world wants to deceive our children and abuse our children, but really to misuse our children for the world's purposes. But God has a plan. God has a purpose and God has a destiny, not just for us, but he has a destiny for our children. See, the world wants to wound the sheep. But what God says, he says, I want to take care of my sheep. That's the heart of God. We serve a compassionate God. We serve a loving God. We serve a God that cares. That while the world wants to wound and misuse the sheep, God says, I want to take care of my sheep. He goes on to say, I want to gather my sheep to myself, and I want to lead my sheep to an abundant place. I want to lead my sheep to a broad territory. I want to lead my sheep into a good land, the Bible says. He wants to take us along with him. And guess what? The good news is he wants to use us to take others along with us. You see, he's a compassionate God. Ezekiel 34, he says, I will... Search for my sheep and seek them out like a shepherd seeks out the flock on that day that he is among his scattered sheep. He says, I will seek out my sheep and I will deliver them from all the places they were scattered on a cloud and dark day. How many know we've we've come out of a cloudy and dark day? We've come out of a cloudy and dark time. We've come out of a season of loss and suffering. We've come out of a season of struggle. Can I hear a good Amen. We all know what it is to experience that darkness, but guess what the good news is that in spite of the darkness, God doesn't say, come to me. He says, I'm going to go to you. Yeah. Out of my compassion, I'm going to find you in that season. I'm going to find you in that struggle. I'm going to find you in that depression. Come on. He's like, that's the God we serve. That's the heart of God. Yeah. See, church, it's Christmas time. This is a time to rejoice. This is the time to be happy. Why? Because Jesus was born on Christmas. Christmas is not about Santa. You know that. Christmas is not about reindeer. It's not about elves. We like the gifts part. Come on, somebody. 
But the greatest gift was the compassion of God to send his only son to be born on Christmas Day. I think you ought to shout. You ought to get happy and say, thank you for Jesus' life. The Bible says that Jesus came at the right time. He came at the appointed time. He came at the perfect time. He came at the time where we are at our greatest need. In fact, you'll find that the time when he came, the people were just being abused, misused, not only by the government, the Roman Empire, but even the religious leaders were, were heavy handed with the people. They were heavy handed with the people. They were misusing the people of God for their own uh, purposes. And when God looked down from heaven and he saw the condition of oppression and he saw the condition of his people, that's when he sent his son Jesus into this world. And what you find is that Jesus, when he came, he came with the heart of the father. He came with the heart of God, his heavenly father, because when Jesus got a little bit older, the Bible tells us that he was a little bit older and, and it says he saw the crowds. And the Bible says that when he saw the crowds, that he was moved with compassion because they were harassed and helpless. But notice, this is the key part that sometimes we miss. It's not just that they were harassed and helpless, but that they were like sheep having no shepherd. They were like people without a covering. He saw their heart. He saw their condition. He saw that they had no covering. They had no one to protect them. They had no one to help them in their time of need. He saw how the world was taking advantage of God's people. But he came with the heart of the Father, not only to shepherd them, not only to cover them, but to bind up their brokenness, to cover their sin, to renew. Thank God for Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus for coming to our aid when we were at our worst. See, there was also a challenge in Ezekiel 34 where the Bible says the rams and the goats. In Ezekiel 34, God says, I'm going to bring judgment to the rams and the goats. Who are those rams and those goats? Those rams and those goats are the ones who have bumped the weak sheep out of the goodness of the land. Hear the heart of the Father. It's not that we would bump people out, but that we would welcome people in. <laughs> Hear me again. It's not that we would use and abuse people, but that we would build the bridge to the goodness of the land. And the Lord is speaking to Israel. And he's saying, I'm going to deal with those rams and those goats and those religious Pharisees and those. Come on, somebody. I'm going to deal with those fat sheep that drink up all the water and trample on all the grass and don't share any good thing. Mm, come on, it's quiet in here. He said, I'm going to deal with those fat ones. She says, but my heart is not to push them out. My heart is to bring them in. My heart is to bring them in. I, I got a question for you, Christian, man of God, woman of God, leader in the house of God. What's your heart? Do you have the heart of the father to bring in the scattered sheep of Israel, the scattered sheep of San Diego? See, there are different types of people in the house of God, there are the carefree, the careless, the careful, and the compassionate. The heart of God is that we would be compassionate. Who, who are the carefree people? These are the people who have much, but they're not moved by what is happening around them. It seems as nothing moves them. They only see, they can't see beyond their grass. They can't see beyond their pasture. They can't see beyond their own house. They can't see beyond their front lawn. They're unaware of the things that are happening around them. They, they don't seem to care. They see sheep around them that are starving and hungry. But they only care about what pertains to them. They seem to have a carefree life. They don't get involved because they don't share their blessing with the weak sheep. That God has been good to them. God has blessed them. God has healed them. God has restored them. God has increased them, but they're not willing to give what they themselves have freely received. You see, they only care about what concerns their situation. They don't give. They don't encourage. They don't pray for anyone. In a sense, they're carefree because they kind of just hoard their blessing. Another type of person is the careless. These are people who are not careful with the sheep. 
like I mentioned, the rams and the goats. At that time when Jesus came, the Pharisees were bullies. They were rough and rugged with the sheep. They weren't sensitive to the sheep. They lacked compassion towards the sheep, always correcting, always rebuking the sheep. And instead of welcoming the sheep in, they kind of rattle the sheep. Come on, and they scare the sheep out of the pasture. They hurt the sheep. They cause the sheep to scatter. That's not the heart of God. Come on, the heart of God is not that sheep would be scattered. He says, I want to gather my sheep. I believe what the Lord is saying to us is he wants us to be sensitive to the sheep. He doesn't want us to hurt the sheep. He wants us to meet the needs of the sheep. The third type of person is the careful. Now you have the careless who are rough with the sheep. You have the carefree who kind of don't even, are not concerned with the sheep, but the careful. They love the sheep, but they're afraid to step out. They're afraid to step out and and they're afraid to kind of take a risk on the sheep. And I believe that sometimes you can feel like that. Well, what do I have to offer? What do I have to give? I don't have much to give. I don't have much to share. I, I came to tell you, you got more than what you think. You got more than what you think. You you've got the word that somebody needs. You've got the prayers that somebody needs. You've even got a gift, a little bit of substance. Come on. And maybe this is the moment where God is telling you to step out of that box. Because guess what, church? We wouldn't be here unless someone took a risk on us. I, I could tell you I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be here today if, if someone was too careful. Somebody had to come in and give me a word when I needed it. Somebody had to come in and, and give me an encouragement when I needed it. Somebody had to come in and had to share a little bit of what they had because if they didn't step out and were too careful, come on, even some of them came in and said, listen, man, something's got to change in your life if you want to be great for God. And I'm grateful today that somebody didn't sit back and just care about themselves. No, they stepped out to help me. They stepped out to push me to greatness. How about you? When's the last time you stepped out? Some of you got to step out of your comfort zone right now. You can step out and make a difference. And that's the fourth type of person, the compassionate person. See, these are the people that possess the father's heart for the sheep. They're willing to take a risk. They're willing to bring the sheep into the pasture. They're the ones who say to the sheep, listen, there's, there's room for you to graze. We haven't eaten up all the grass. Come on, somebody. We haven't drinking all the water. We haven't eaten up all the food. There's room for you to come and to graze. And maybe they won't let you graze over there. Or maybe they won't. They haven't prepared a place for you over here. But guess what? I've prepared a place for you. You can come to my house. You can come to my church. You can come to my house fire. Come on, somebody. You can eat with me. we prepared a place for you. This is what the, the church needs more than ever. We need to regain our compassion. We need to regain our compassion. We need to let people know who've been scattered that there's room for you in the promised land. You can come and partake of what God has given us. See, the shepherd's heart is God's heart. And what we've got to remember right now is that every person is in a different place in life. People are all in different places. As I look out here in this room, every one of us are here, but we're all in a different place spiritually. Some are high, some are low, some are blessed, some are believing. Some are strong in the spirit. Some are going through some situations right now. But here's the key. People suffer when we're not sensitive. People suffer when we're not sensitive. And what God is looking to raise up here in San Diego are leaders who are not mechanical. Mm. We're not spiritual robots. God has called us to be sensitive and compassionate and to carry his heart to hurting people. I think it's time to let compassion drive us. I think it's time. Yes, Jesus has the will. But if Jesus has got the will, that means compassion is driving. That means compassion is leading. It's time to let compassion drive the car. It's time to let compassion drive us. It's time to let compassion get out in the front of our life. It's time to let compassion lead a little bit. Who could say amen? I'll tell you, when you have compassion, compassion will drive you. Com compassion will drive you. It'll drive your worship. 
It'll drive your worship. Come on, somebody. When we get up here to worship, we're not just singing songs and trying to impress people. No, no. We're driven with a heart of compassion that when people come into the house of God, we can feel their heavy burdens. We can feel their spiritual battles. We can feel their struggles. And we lead them into the presence of God through worship because we know it's the presence of God that brings relief. It's the presence of God that brings breakthrough. It's the presence of God that will give them hope. Come on, church. We got to let compassion lead. Compassion will lead our giving. When compassion leads, you, you, you say, I can't hold anything back for myself. No way. God has been too good to me. You should have saw me when I walked in. Come on, Victor Outreach. You should have saw me when I walked in. You should have saw how I looked. and You should have saw that I couldn't even smile. But God has been too good to me to hold anything back. Compassion will drive your worship. Compassion will drive your gift. You say, Lord, it doesn't belong to me anyways. So give it to the poor. Give it to the struggling. Give it to the hurting. Woo. We got to let compassion drive. Who could say Amen. Compassion will drive your worship. Compassion will drive your giving. Man, compassion will drive your preaching. Your preaching and your preaching, the preaching right here in the pulpit, the preaching in the house fires. We're not here to impress. We're not here for quotables. We're not here for one-liners. We, we got to put some heart into this thing. What I try to do every time I come up in this pulpit, I'm not the most polished preacher. I certainly don't have all the words. Sometimes I mumble my words and I don't like how I look on camera, but it doesn't matter. I'm trying to convey the heart of God to a people to let them know that God's got a plan for your marriage and God's got a plan for your children and God could break you out of that old life. Let compassion drive you, church. Get your compassion. Compassion will drive your preaching. Compassion will drive your evangelism. We got to let compassion lead because when compassion leads, you won't be able to stay in that pew. You, you won't just be able to come to church on Sunday. Let me, let me say this. You won't come to church with an empty car. No way, Jose. Come on now. When compassion drives you, it drives your evangelism. You're not just a religious robot in the house of God. You've got the good news. You've got some oil. You've got some hope. You've got some answers. You've got some word. You've got some encouragement. He said, why don't you come with me to some greener pastures? God's prepared a land for you. God's prepared a territory for you. It'll get you out of your comfort zone. It'll get you out of your seat. Get you outside these four walls and then compassion will drive your discipleship. We got to let compassion drive. As we close out this year, I can't think of a better time than to let compassion drive. It'll drive your discipleship. It'll, it'll, drive, with, it'll drive how you work with people. It, it'll cause you to say, I'm not going to give up on people so easily. Woo! I'm not going to give up on people so easily. I'm so grateful for people, come on, who didn't see my flaws, but they saw my needs. They were willing to look beyond my flaws. They were willing to look beyond my frailties. Mm, you're not saying nothing to me. How about you? They were willing to look beyond my complexes. They didn't judge me by how I dressed or what I said or how I always behaved. Yes, they corrected me at times, but they saw potential in my life. And when all hell broke loose, they didn't step out. They stepped in and they said, I'm going to walk with you in the good season. And I'm going to walk with you in the tough. Come on, who could be grateful for somebody that didn't give up on you? Let compassion drive. Let compassion drive. Why should we let compassion drive? Because that's the heart of God towards his people. He's a God of compassion. He's a shepherd. And everybody's in a different place. As we go into this Christmas holiday, you got to think about that. Everybody's in a different place, in a different place spiritually. What, what did God convey in Ezekiel 34 and then I'm going to be done? Well, he says, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to search out for my lost sheep. I'm going to search them out. 
talks about it in verse 11 through 16. He says, I'm going to search out the lost sheep. In other words, I'm not going to make them come to me. I'm going to go to them. I'm going to go to them. I'm going to, I'm going to inconvenience myself. Woo. And I'm going to search out my lost sheep. The second thing he says, he says, I'm going to deliver the captive sheep. My, my sheep that are captive, my, my sheep that got caught up in a fence. Come on, they wandered away. They got diverted. They got caught in a fence. Their feet are tangled. Come on. I'm going to go find them and I'm going to untangle them. Oh, I'm going to untangle them from that relationship. I'm going to untangle them from that depression. Oh, some of you got to get radical. You might have to <laughs> go into someone's house and turn on all the lights and just, it's too dark in here. It's time for you to come out of the cave. God's got a big, big plan. Come on, you're going to have to get radical. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to be untangled. Somebody needs to break out of their situation. And when, when you know that, maybe God wants you to be the one that's going to go untangle them. He also says that I'm going to gather those dispersed sheep. So I'm not going to scatter them. I'm going to bring them in. I'm going to bring them into the goodness of the land. And number four, I'm going to cause for them, for the hungry sheep to eat. He says, I'm going to feed those hungry sheep. Oh, yeah. When they come, I'm going to feed them. I'm going to give them all the tamales. I'm going to give them all the obonigas. I'm going to give them all the ribs I cooked up. I'm going to give them all the pumpkin pie. I'm going to just feed them and feed them. They're weak. Come on now. They're hungry. They're starving. I'm going to feed them with my word. I'm going to feed them with hope. I'm going to feed them with love. I'm going to feed them with compassion. I'm going to feed them with encouragement. I'm not going to put them down. I'm not going to punch down on them. I'm going to pick them up. I'm going to pick them up. Come on. This is the heart of God. He says, in the ones that are weary, the weary sheep, he says, I'm going to risk rest the weary sheep. In verse 15, I'm going to tell him, you can lay down here. Ooh, this is good. You can lay down here. I'm not going to, they're tired. I'm not going to overwork them. I'm not going to criticize them. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to say, come on, give me more, give me more. No, 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 they're hurting. I'm going to let them, if they're weary, I'm going to let them rest. Go ahead and you can just rest. You can be filled. You can also, number six, be bound up. And in verse 16, he says, I'm going to bind up the hurt sheep, the ones that are bleeding, the ones that have been wounded this year. Who knows someone that's been wounded this year? Come on, wave at me. you got to know more than one person. They've been wounded. They've been wounded out there. Some might even been wounded in the house of God. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to them, and I'm not going to get negative. I'm just going to bind them up. I'm just going to pour some oil on them and come with some bandages. Come on. Come with some burn cream. I'm going to rub it on them. I'm going to tell them everything's going to be all right. I'm going to pour out the oil of the Holy Spirit on them and tell them, listen, God's not done with you. You might have had a tough year. You might have had a tough season. But God loves you, and he's got a good territory for you. And you're just hurt right now, but we've all been hurt. But here's the good news. Jesus died. It's Christmas time. It's time to come home. Who could say amen? Look at the heart of God. He says also in verse 16, he says, I'm going to strengthen the weak sheep. I'm going to go out and find those who have been weak, and I'm going to prophesy to them. I'm going to strengthen their faith. I'm going to just speak life into them. In verse 17 through 22, he says, I protect the vulnerable sheep. That's so powerful. It's the heart of God. We're not here to expose each other's weaknesses. Come on. We're here to cover people. We're here to protect them. We're here to love them. When others didn't want to love them, guess what? We step in and we protect them. Come on. When others gave up on them, we come and say, no, it's going to be okay. We don't tell their dirty laundry. Hey. We protect the people. Can I hear an amen? And then number nine, I like this one. This is the one I like. I like this one. In verse 23, he says, I'm going to equip the needy sheep. I'm going to equip them. 
I'm going to teach them. I'm going to grow them. I'm going to build them up. I'm going to train their faith. Oh, come on, church. This is the heart of God. I'm going to train their faith, and I'm going to challenge them where they need to be. I'm going to push them to greatness. I'm going to say, you're more than that. You're bigger than that. You can do more. Come on, somebody. There's great things inside you. Let me teach you how to be great. Let me teach you how to be a husband. Let me teach you how to be a wife. Let me teach you how to be a parent. Come on. Come on now. Let me teach you how to be a godly young person. And then lastly, as they come, the heart of God is to direct all the sheep. To direct all the sheep. Don't you realize that we're just under shepherds. That's all we are. He's the great shepherd. We're just under shepherds. We're just called to care for the people that he loves. That's our job. Whether you're caring for your spouse, or you're caring for your children, grandchildren, disciples, friends, God's using you. He uses you. I want to even say something to marriages. Like God uses you to care for your spouse, to feel their pain sometimes. So you sometimes just feed them a meal. Put your heart in that meal. Like he doesn't deserve it. Well, you didn't either. See how we get? See how we get? Let compassion drive. Let compassion drive your marriage. Let compassion drive how you parent your kids. Start thinking about how bad you were. Boy, your pa- you, you, some of you really hurt your parents. Wave at me. Come on, you hurt them. You hurt, your, you hurt those folks, didn't you? And, and, and their kids, now you look at your kids and, good Lord, they're a lot better than you were. Oh, Pastor, you don't know. They're brats. You were the worst kind of brat, let me just say. Who who could agree with your pastor on this one? You're right, Pastor. That's true. Let compassion lead. Come on, church. Who's with me? Let compassion lead. Who thinks it's time to let compassion lead? Let let, let compassion lead and know that he, you know, I I, I say this in this, I didn't say in the first, is that we got to give an account to God and how we lead. Because he's the great shepherd. And we're just under shepherds. And we have a, we have a responsibility to do God's work. Who, who, who agrees? We have a responsibility. We're going to stand before God and say, how did you lead my people? I, I live with that. I live with that. I, I examine our leadership. I examine our business practices. I examine our integrity as a church. I, I shepherd on many levels. Because I know that I don't answer to you. I answer to God. And he's going to say, how did you lead my people? And am I going to say, oh, I was young. No, bro, that's an excuse. No, 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 no. Did you have my heart? Did you have my heart? Did you understand that I have a plan for my people? Come on, church. And we as his people have to consider how we lead. Are we leading people to the good land? There's room for them. There's still room for them, church. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Who believes it? Let me even prophesy that in the days to come, you're going to see people that were scattered come back to the house of God. People you know. People that were in church before, possibly even serving. And they're going to come back. And what they're going to need is they're going to need every one of these points that I brought out. But I think also we've got to find them. We've got to go on a Holy Ghost manhunt. <laughs> Some of you know about a manhunt because you were the de- you know the cops are after you. Could I hear you like, whoa? <laughs> but how many believe it's time to go on a Holy Ghost manhunt? Go find them. You say it's safe. God wants to heal you. God wants to restore you. That's what Sunday's going to be. I mean, Saturday. That's what Saturday's going to be. That's what I want it to be. I want Christmas Eve to be that. How many agree? I want to see so much joy in this place that it causes us to cry. My, my wife.
wife was telling me yesterday because we've been trying to get back into Rady's and we're going every month ministering at Ronald McDonald House. Maybe you know that Charisma went through leukemia. Also, Amanda went through leukemia. Others were stricken. And God healed her at Rady's. And we committed to go and minister to those families until the doors were closed to COVID. And we couldn't go anywhere. We were faithful every month. Many of you were faithful. You'd cook, you'd minister. Some of the families would come on Sunday. Beautiful, beautiful. So we've been trying to get in. Just the doors are closed. It just wasn't happening because of COVID and whatnot. And then finally, uh, I think Charlene got a call. And they said, hey, they called me and they said they want us to do Christmas carols. I said, praise God. Amen. Beautiful. There it is. But that wasn't just it. Then the next day, my wife, who had been trying to get in, she gets a call and says, guess what? They said we can go into the cancer ward and give toys to the kids that are receiving treatment. Come on. And the, the nurse said, remember, remember the past. Remember that, that family. What a wonderful family. I said, oh, that's cool. We remember when they were here. I've been here 18 years, and I remember when they were here. And uh, it was great. Let's try to work it out. And when I heard that, I immediately started to feel tears in my heart because, you know, when you remember what God pulled you out of, you can't help but to break. You can't help but to break. And we've got to remember that when compassion leads, it makes everything better. It makes everything easier. Next Saturday, I believe there's going to be a lot of tears. There's going to be a lot of brokenness. Why? Because we're going to let compassion lead. But before we can do that this morning, I want to pray for you. Because what flows to you is what will flow through you. And I look out today and I see many of you. And I could just say this. You've had a tough year. Just wave at me. You've had a tough year. You've had a tough year. My, my, my tough year hasn't been so much personal. It's just been more ministry has been tough. It's been tough. And sometimes when you're going through tough times, you wonder, God, where are you? Do you still love me? Have you still called me? You know, I see you blessing this one and blessing that one. And this one seems so happy on Instagram. <laughs> Perfect pictures and and then you look, you look in the mirror, you're like, my life is sorry. <laughs> but we know that's all show. People have real stuff going on in their life. But here's the good news. He loves you. And he has a plan for every one of us. I believe it. Do you believe it? He loves us. And sometimes the only solution is to fall into loving arms. You ever been in that place where you just needed a hug? You're like, this whole fight would end if you just hug me. Just shut up and hug me. This whole situation would stop if you would just tell me how you feel about me. Well, that's what the Lord wants to do for us this morning. He says, I want you, Al, to call my people into my arms so that they can know how much I love them and how much I care about them. And I think that's what God wants to do this morning as you stand. Maybe you're here. And this is one of the last services of the year. But this is your service. This is your moment. I don't, I don't care whether you've been coming every Sunday or you come one Sunday a month. This is your day to fall into the arms of God. I don't care if you're a leader or you're new. He loves you and we love you. And we're going to sing this song. And as we sing it, I think as you make your way up to this altar, you're going to feel his embrace. You're going to feel his presence. His presence is going to heal you. I even think some of you, his presence is going to remove some of those negative things in your mind. Who, who needs like their brain to just be wiped out right now? Like, Lord, just... 
wants to experience that supernatural touch. Are you ready? Okay, we're going to sing this song. I want you to come to this altar.